Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of VO Buzz Weekly and what's happening today, Stace? Today we have the genius impressionist, TV, film, voice actor, Jim Meskimen. Get ready to laugh. Absolutely, let's get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Our guest is a versatile TV, film, and voice actor. You've seen him in so many things. You've seen him compete on America's Got Talent. You've heard him in Avengers Assemble and The Boondocks. You've maybe watched his celebrity podcast on YouTube or seen his fabulous live show, Jim Impressions. Bottom line, he is fabulous, and have you seen the jacket? The jacket. We are so ready to get buzzed with the totally Check the amazing Check out the back Jim of the Meskimen. Oh. Thank you. That Great is to be here, Stacey Chuck. I'm kinda, I'm sad I didn't wear my orange fringe boots had I known we could have coordinated. It's nice, huh? This was, this is the jacket Ooh. once owned by Liberace's Pool Man. <laughs> Liberace's Pool Man! It has a matching so, speedo, though. So, yeah. you, so, 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 have you, do you wear this every day, or did you bring it out special to I, be on I the show? I wear it every day. <laughs> no, I, this is actually the first public appearance of, of me in this, uh, in this wow. particular jacket. And I'll be wearing it uh, this Saturday night in my Jimpression show. Get down, Trying it baby. out. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's start. How I can I help you? you? How can I help you? Wait, can I just say, can I just say, can I just say, can I, of course, um, sweetheart. You and I have the same birthday. September 10th? Yes. Oh, I thought you looked familiar. Yes. Mm. I know. I see you at the meetings. Yes. <laughs> um, are you very Virgoian in your, uh, by nature? Virgo, yeah, I guess like I am. What are the what are the Virgo traits? Organized. Uh, mm. No, he's not that Detail oriented. I, I can be detail oriented. A little uh, bit bossy Particularly maybe. in my art, I'm detail oriented. Yeah. And I find it hard to... Uh, I mean, I, I draw and paint as well, and yes. and and I do now a lot of you know video and audio stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, it takes a lot of time to get those things just to match. To, to, yeah. to be right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm detail ordered that way. Yeah. Are you that way too? I am. I like order. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm loyalty is that. loyalty. Yes, yeah. loyalty. <laughs> yes. I, I feel Very I'm a loyal lo person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Well, Beautiful. Well, but you'd have to ask the traders. The, ooh. <laughs> um, okay. So you come from an entertainment family. Yeah. Yeah. Was there ever a doubt that you would end up in the entertainment? There business? was. There was a, a mainly a, a substantial period of doubt, and it was it, resident in me. Yeah. I, I was not clear about what. It, I I liked performing, and as a little kid, I loved doing voices, and, and I was not a very outgoing or gregarious kid, mm -hmm. but secretly, you know, I liked to do it, and I enjoyed to do little plays and yeah. stuff like that, like a lot of boys do, and I was one of the kids that has, like I'm sure a lot of people you've interviewed, that had a cassette player and would do right. little radio shows and say, no, we're going to do, you know, this, yeah. I did all that crap, and, uh, but as far as like pursuing it as a, as a career, I actually got a little confused because my mother was so successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a lucky thing because obviously we survived, but it was lucky to see her. She started off, you know, in a nice, <laughs> like that. Yeah. So for years she was just successful. And she was a single mom. Yeah. She would do TV shows, she would do a commercial. We'd be like, oh, she did a commercial. And then, you know, and then Happy Days uh, yep. took off. My mom's Marion Ross, so Happy yes. Days, who played Mrs. C, whose birthday it is today, October uh, 25th. Oh, right on, man. But um, I got confused because, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe this is the Virgo in me, but I, I felt like, all right, I like to do this thing, it's fun. What's the honorable part of it? What's the what's the justifiable part? Because if you're gonna mm -hmm. if you're gonna make a lifestyle out of something that you think is fun, yeah, is it just fun for you? You know, I, and I worried about that, yeah. and and I really had to, and I didn't know because my mother never talked about the deeper philosophy or of her the direction of her career, right. Mm -hmm. It was a fait accompli. It was like, well, I bet 15, she said, this is what path I'm going on. And that's She what never the looked back. Right. right. And I was like, mm, I mm, couldn't quite figure it out. And I eventually did. And, uh, and I realized, ah, and I talk about this a little bit in my show, like uh, the, the epiphany. Yeah, what that, was the uh, brought, epiphany? Well, it was, um, it was Harvey Keitel, the great actor Harvey Keitel. <laughs> Let me and get the I piano. To, uh, <laughs> yeah, get the piano. Sure, I'll, you can buy, I'll buy a key at a time. What was that? Did she buy it from him or he bought it? I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> but I, ha I was living in Spain. Yeah. Uh, I was studying art. And I was uh, at a real crossroads. Uh, I was 23. And this nagging problem of actor, 
painter, actor, painter. No, no, actor, painter, painter. Wow, painter, painter. actor, painter. That's yeah. like a big yeah. stretch right there. Yeah, yeah. Makes money, go broke. Makes yeah. money, go broke. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was like a rock in my chest, and I, I was really wrestling with it. And then I, uh, I was going through a period of my life where I was making a lot of border and sorting things out and uh, stopped doing drugs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all stopped that. Yeah, good. It's good. good. Yeah, yeah. This is the thing to do. It's the hip thing it's to the do. New, it's the hey new, man, it's the new stop cool. doing drugs. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's right. To be conscious and alert is where it's at. So <laughs> I had the clarity of mind to be able to see. Oh, and well, anyway, but I walked down the street in Madrid, down the whatever the Gran Via or whatever, and I had just seen Mean Streets in a revival house somewhere. Yeah, mm. and I noticed walking up the street is Harry Keitel. Mm. Who I did not expect to see, yes. like like you do. So I stopped him, and uh, he spoke to me a little while, a couple minutes. I'm doing. I was shooting a movie here in Madrid, and uh, yeah, what are you doing? Harvey Keitel has a very small mouth. Yeah. Sounds, yeah. He, he has a sound like his yeah. sound is all in the front of his face, but he's a terrific, terrific actor. So and and after he left, my heart was just going bum 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 bum, and I had the presence of mind to go, ah, oh, that's interesting. I don't feel that way when I talk to painters I know or see, uh, uh, I'm like, ah, well, maybe this. This is the effect that I want to create on other people. Right. I'd like someone to talk to me or to see a show I do mm -hmm. and be exhilarated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's possible. And I went, oh, okay. So then I, I made my decision. I moved to New York. Wow, that's good, man. Then Hung up the brushes, but then you obviously got them back out. We'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, well, I never stopped it, really. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I love to paint as an activity. I just don't yeah. know how to make a big living at it, and I don't know how to exhilarate people with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas I do know how to make people, you know, have a good time with my performing and stuff. Yeah. No, and, yeah. and make it a living, it, so, right. which is important. Listen, important. Oh, you boy. bought that fabulous jacket, so right? hi. Yeah. It's, it's kind cheap. of like a painting, your it jacket. Is, it is. It's so. like a Peter Max painting. I yeah. think it's a fantastic, bit, man. A, so fantastic. Or a crazy um, Russian I'd have to bird. mug him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Take it. So, can we just, real quickly, I just got to say that your mom, dude, oh. is like the coolest thing in the world. I mean, I grew up on happy days, yeah. and Mrs. C was just like, <laughs> she was like the life of the the, the, the yeah. whole show. I mean, the the the, the, the this beautiful all American mom yes. that just like we had it all together. Yes. Was she like that at at home too? I mean, no, that that's same a character. Just I mean, character. she is wonderful, but yeah. she's wonderful in a completely different category. Yeah. And uh, Marion is a creation, you know, of Gary Marshall and, yeah. and my mom, uh, and uh, she is. Hilariously funny. She's very uh, spiritually centered, yeah. uh, inspirational, and she loves to. And this is this is something that you see amongst uh, really wonderful older people a lot. Is that she's perfectly fine with just invading your space yeah, yeah. and saying, Get you know what we're gonna, you know what we're gonna do? <laughs> we're just gonna take this hair and we're gonna color it a little bit, and and we're gonna get those teeth fixed, and you know. <laughs> But she does it with such, my teeth. such I'm just, I'm a hypothetical you. Okay. But I'm just, you know, and she's perfectly fine in getting in your face about things like that with such affinity yes. that you just like, okay, you fine, I'll go, do whatever okay. you say. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, I, I'm mad about her, and she just turned 88 today. Fantastic. Congratulations. That's really and good. we had a lovely party Long down in San Diego rain. for her. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. She, and yeah. she's still working, you know, when she wants yeah. to, but she doesn't have to work if she doesn't yeah. want to. And That's She's fantastic. in a pretty sweet place. And, and for me, growing up, and my sister also, who's also in the business, mm -hmm. I think it was very good to see. It's an advantage to to have a parent um, that works be, in the business because you see what it really is. Yeah, yeah of not course. the hype. Yeah, I mean you see what the hype is based on. Yeah, but, right, but right. it's not all as you know. It's not all red carpets and, mm -hmm. and amazing jobs. It's sometimes really crappy jobs and long hours and uh, a lot of auditions, a lot of yeah. rejection and <laughs> <laughs> disappointment. Exactly. And you know she had a very unique. Uh, success, you know. I mean, she yeah. became. I mean, you know, in the seventies, sixties uh, and seventies, when I when I was growing up with her yeah. as a kid, I mean, you know, she'd get a guest spot on Mannix, yeah, or you know, Long Street or you know, whatever, and 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 we'd be like, yeah, that's great, you know. And then three months would go by, mm -hmm. four months would go by, or, so you know, it's like. As a single mom, those are high single stakes. Single mom, for yeah, her. two yeah. kids. You know, I mean, I, my wife and I, we raised our our daughter by ourselves. You know, as a team, and it was still hard. And it's still hard. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah. I have a lot of respect for mom. Absolutely. It just grows and yeah. grows. Thank you for what you said. Absolutely. Wow. Chalk a couple up there for Long for mom. may she and reign. Happy birthday. And yeah. by the way, I did a, a video in tribute to my mother, uh, a celebrity podcast where I have different celebrities from Happy Days and from her career, living and dead, yeah. call her up mm. uh, and leave a mess, you know, leave a little message yeah. for so her. You guys can search that on YouTube. It is so Yeah, it's fun. my uh, Jim Meskimen live celebrity podcast mm. with Marion Ross. And, uh, and, you know, I didn't expect to have this kind of impact. I wanted her to fell and, and tear up and stuff yeah. and, and feel honored. Mm -hmm. But she was like, I did like Henry Winkler and Ron Howard and Donnie Most and Anson Williams, which are all right. voices that I, I was doing in high school yeah, right. because yeah, yeah. I met them. I knew them, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I, I, and when she was listening, she turned to me and went, oh, you got Henry to do this. Aww. And I said, no, no, mom. No, no mom, it's me. Well, oh, that's Donnie. That is Donnie. I'm like, no, mom, it's me. So that was like an, actually an an unpursued uh, effect of it. I didn't really want yes. to do that, but it was like, oh. <laughs> you always feel, you know, as an impressionist, I'm sure guys you've talked to are all like, kind of like, it's a little bit of a game, you know? You're right. like, gee, if I can, if I can fool somebody, that's kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. that's that's Absolutely, as close as I'm going to get to man. a touchdown or a home run at this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so how do you, like, when you were even younger and you started like, you know, learning how to do imp impressions, was it something that you thought about and broke it down to like you know get those out, or it just came not natural to you? Was there a process? Yeah, just is like, there a process? Just, I, I'm sure there is, and and now I have to be a little more professional yeah. about it. Um, today, what I do is if I really, really am trying to match something, and that happens with the uh, mm -hmm. trailers and yeah. with uh, voice matching and um, big movies that need a voice and something, I'll go on YouTube. Thank God we have YouTube. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and I'll study and listen. And I'll go, okay, all right, okay, and I'll go. Hey, he's just a man, you know, your day that we live in infamy and whatever, and well, that's that's the wrong guy, but that's, that's the wrong day. Anyway, <laughs> and I'll study it, and then I'll go in the booth, and I'll record, and now now if I really, you know, usually I'm just kind of like, eh, that's, I got it, that's yeah. close enough. Yeah. But now I've been like going back and go, well, well listen to this, because I know my voice pretty well, but so I go back and play it again and do a kind of an A, B, A, B yeah. with the original and mm -hmm. go, Okay, I'm missing this part of it. I'm missing this tonality or whatever, and then I'll go back in and try it again. Right. You know, and then when you, if you, God forbid, you book the job, you go and, and then you're really like, okay, really trying to <laughs> hunker down and do this, and then you realize it's at that point that you realize, this is impossible, but I can come close. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's funny, it's particularly with, um, and even with voices that we know very well, like John F. Kennedy, mm -hmm. you know, someone like that. What does John F. Kennedy sound like? Well, John F. Kennedy, when he was just speaking quietly, had a sort of a tonality like this. But actually, he spoke a little bit deeper than this. He had a little bit deeper resonance, but still, the Boston accent is more or less here. That's good. But that if we played it A, B, A, B, you'd go, well, that's Jim, that's John. I mean, you'd, mm -hmm. you'd just separate yeah. right out. like. Uh, no Have you cream. ever had somebody where you just go, I, I, I can't? Many I times, mostly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, people ask that all more, the time. Are like, there more voices tons. that are, are there? Is there a type of tonality or texture that's easier to? Yeah, latch I mean, onto? I have a certain equipment. It would be like having a certain guitar or mm -hmm. a violin or something. Yeah. And you go, well, you know, it's just this. Like Paul McCartney. I've seen Paul McCartney. He says, oh, I brought this guitar out. You know, we used to play this. This is what you play this song on. You know? And he's got like 17 guitars that yeah. travel with yeah. him, or more probably, yeah. maybe yeah. 50 guitars that travel with him all over the world. Why? Because they each have a different flavor, mm -hmm. character, warmth, whatever. Right. So and my mainly because he can. And because and he can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. yeah. He could not, for no reason at all. Yeah. He just write the check. Yeah. Uh, but for me, this is what I have. And I can alter it, and I can change the sound of it, and I can move the sound different places in my face. I can hear particular, particular sort of changes. But uh, this is the basic equipment that I have, and it has yeah. a basic kind of signature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anytime I get a, a, a request, can you do this voice, and I can kind of hear... Mm, that's right. That's in the same little village that I come from. Yeah. Then I'm like, okay, good. And these days, I like to do these older characters anyway, because you can always make your voice sound older by making it sound more wow, hollow mm -hmm. or whatever. Well, that was really good. Yeah, thank you, you even put a little like jitter spin on it. Yes. Yeah. A little sauce. He's getting good, this guy. <laughs> so you should have a show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so obviously, your improvisational skills are very fine tuned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, uh, I worked at it. I mean, I, I did uh, improv in New York for 10 years and mm -hmm. then out here for a number of years. And I got, I got very good training. I trained with a woman named Tamara Wilcox-Smith, who's no longer with us. Uh, and she worked with the committee and worked with um, 
uh, Del Close. I almost said Glenn Close. <laughs> close. It's close. Very, very close. close, but no Del no. Close. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, so the, the foundation there of agreement and creativity yeah. okay. was solid. So, so I, I actually feel more comfortable improvising than I do memorizing lines most of the time because that, right. that has a certain right and wrong aspect yes. that yeah. I, yes. you know, we're not always so, that comfortable so with. So obviously improv in the voiceover realm, very important. I guess so. Um, I, I've heard it said that. And, Have you and, found that? And I found it to some degree. I think, um, and maybe it's a flaw on my part, but I don't go there very often mm -hmm. because I also have a tendency to try to to respect the written word yeah right when it's written yeah and if it's not and if it's just like make up something then I'm like oh fine there's no written word here we go yeah. then I'm mm -hmm. happy yeah uh, but I've done a lot of audio books where yeah it's every written word. <laughs> words. It's, it's semicolon not a comma you know. yeah yeah um, so my my go-to is always to read it as written, mm -hmm. or if it's obviously, you know, could be a little bit loosened up, then I'll do that. But but there are a lot of guys, who I'm sure you've, you've had on your show, that, that take off. You know, like Fred Tattashore is a great example. Mm -hmm. I've, I've directed Ted, uh, Fred, <laughs> Ted, uh, a Ted talk about Fred. Um, <laughs> I've directed Fred, I've been lucky enough, I just worked with him this afternoon, actually. And and Fred has a great facility for improv. Yeah. So he'll he'll just go, and, which is great. Mm -hmm. And I, I look at him and go, mm, well, that's a good idea. Yes. Uh, yeah. I should yes. have done that, but um, it kind of depends on what it is. Like obviously, commercials, there's no room for improv, mm -hmm. True. except if there is, and they tell you, "Hey, we don't know what we're going to say here," and like, oh, Make it your own. "Have an idea, have an idea," yeah. you know, yeah. and then I'm ready. Right. But I don't right. just, I don't, I don't Take leap into improv. Yeah. Yeah. But as a skill, I agree, it's something to have. It's another, it's another aspect of the voice artist's uh, toolkit that yeah. is that is important. Yeah. What do you think well, are your strengths? I'm. Uh, my strengths. I'm. I'm pretty literate. I'm a writer myself. Uh, I love words. I understand why. Why we're using certain words. Mm -hmm. I understand that they have their own special weight and message. So I think that's a plus. Um, I've just been doing it a long time, and I'm one of these guys who just uh, would be doing it anyway, mm -hmm. had I not figured out a way to to make a living at it. Right. Right. Because you love it. I love it. It's, it's I love it. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm in my car. It's I'm plan driving a, along. B, and I'm C. talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's plan all those plans. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I guess that's a strength. Yeah. And uh, also, just I, you know, like I said, I love words and I like the rhythm of language and uh, the theatricality of storytelling and all that. My father, who was ceased to be a professional actor before I was born but was apparently very good, uh -huh. uh, loved poetry, and he used to read us poetry a lot, mm -hmm. yeah. long before we could understand it. But still, you know, you kind of get the, the beauty of the music. Yeah. And he was a musician and played music yeah. and played records. We would go to his house, my parents were divorced, so we'd go to his house, my sister and I, and listen to hours of records mm -hmm. and sing along with him. And so great. Yeah. A whole different... I whole think musicality different. is another thing that, that yeah. is good yeah. for voice artists yes. to know, to be able to control that and to realize that there is infinite nuance that you yeah. can bring things. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool, man. You have such a diverse background. I love that. So on the original Thundercats series, you were a cartoonist and designer. You did like a hundred, over 100 episodes. A lot. Oh man, uh, Thundercats! Yeah, I was the nice. lead character designer mm -hmm. at the tender age of 24 mm. for Rankin Bass in New York, 53rd and uh, Fifth. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't know. They did a lot of episodes back then when they would buy uh, a, a series. It goes 65 episodes. Wow! Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I think we did at yeah. least I did at least two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, or worth two years yeah. worth of episodes, and I, I it was a great job to have in I New York. Bad man, it was a great job to You're have. You're probably making bank. What um what was that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> He's like, well, you know. Well, Chuck not, would like to see your W twos. Um, what it was, was nice that at the time. It was, I had a lot of fun. I didn't Chuck. have to be a waiter, you know. <laughs> That's true. What was that creative process like uh, for you on that? Well, it was it was it was sort of bizarre, and and it was. It was just pure luck, I think, because uh, I needed a job. I was in New York. I was starving like like any kid and uh, wanted to be an actor. So I needed, and I was an illustrator, so I, I, I not a professional particularly, mm -hmm. but I had done a job when I was 18. Yeah. I worked at Hanna-Barbera here when Hanna-Barbera was just up the street. Yep. And uh, I was a, 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 my mother got me into this. 
she got me, she, to get me out of the house, I think, because I was having a surly summer, <laughs> she got me enrolled in like a, a course at Hanna-Barbera where you learned all the different trades oh, yeah, yeah. at the time, which are That's probably cool. all evaporated yeah. at this point. But, uh, and so I got into the Hanna-Barbera field a little bit, and they knew of me, and they hired me to be an assistant storyboard artist to an artist named Don Rico, and we were working on an absolutely horrible show called Janna of the Jungle. Mm. Janna of the Jungle. Terrible show. Not to be confused with Tarzan of the Jungle. No, Jana. <laughs> Jana. Or Jana. Anyway, I never ever saw one. Jana. 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 <laughs> Norwegian girl on a, <laughs> on a big, what do you call these? Vine. Jana, vine. I couldn't remember the name. I can only think of the Swedish In name. In her later hosen. You know, yeah. Anyway. But I worked for a, a, a guy named Doug Wildey who uh, had uh, created Johnny Quest. Mm -hmm. So that had some honor in it. Yeah, he was a great absolutely. character. And worked with this guy named Don Rico. And he would basically do the blue... Uh, I would do the blue lines and he would pencil them in, or he would do the blue lines and I would pencil them in. And I, I was pretty incompetent. And I certainly did not know how to do storyboarding. I knew how to color in. Yeah. But I, you know, because I'd drawn all my life and I'd, right. you know, tried to draw like more Drucker and Mad Magazine yeah. stuff. So I'd always done cartoons. I was a school cartoonist yeah. and all that. So I wasn't, you know, a complete incompetent, but I certainly was not a storyboard man. But a few years later, I moved to New York and I'm in front of Jules Bass of Rankin Bass. Mm -hmm. And he's showing me uh, these storyboards on his wall for Thundercats saying, uh, what do you think of these? And I said, mm, look a little lean to me. <laughs> <laughs> the audacity, you know? <laughs> the audacity. And he went, all right, good, and we'll, we'll hire you. And then I was like, oh no. Fatten him up. Oh no, <laughs> uh, now I'm hired. <laughs> what am I gonna do <sighs> now? What am I gonna do now? So I, I struggled and I did about, you know, about a week on storyboards and then I think it was abundantly plain to everybody that I was not a storyboard man. But they said, eh, we're going to take you off storyboards and put you on a character, character design. Yeah. And then I went, oh, thank God. That, that you love. That I can do. And yeah. that, yeah. That I can do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I can't, you know, anyway, I, I, I did it for a year and I really enjoyed it and they would hand me the script and it would say, Rockman comes after lion brandishing a huge club. And I'd go, good, Rockman, okay, take a piece of paper, Rockman, he's got a big thing. <laughs> and I generally hand it in, they'd go, that's fine. That's a Rockman. I mean, it was wow. a ridiculous job, ridiculous. <laughs> Very rarely did they go, oh, could Rockman be a little less yeah. igneous or anything like that? Yeah. yeah. Rockman's too serious. Can you <laughs> yeah, make him a little... You... <laughs> sure. Good. Okay. Good. That's fine. Yeah. And then it would go by, by means of the fax machine mm -hmm. to the Pacific Rim where the real people that knew how to do animation would do stuff with it. But it all started with my designs. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool, man. Well, did you still have it? Did you save any of them? I don't have any originals, but I have a lot of copies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I brought them when I finally, uh, I auditioned and got a part on the new Thundercats show. And I made it a point of bringing everything in to show the guys so and, to, cool. and to see. And, th and then they showed me what they were doing. I was like, oh, this is, this is so much You're better. You're like, but I'm the original. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was first, but you guys are kicking my ass. Yeah. That's a neat full circle moment. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Um, can we talk about, well, first of all, I have a question for you. <laughs> that, <laughs> when, how often, don't lie, <laughs> how often do you go to, I don't know, the market, a fair, anywhere, somebody walks up to you and says, excuse me, Mr. Sting, can I have your autograph? <laughs> Not often. But has it happened? It has happened, but generally, I'm not mistaken for Sting, but people say, did anyone ever tell, did anyone ever tell you look, look like, like Sting? Him. Yeah, because if you talk like, if so, you did that, at one time, we, my wife and I, we decided to play a prank on on people. We had a first class ticket to Texas, I think, to Amarillo or or somewhere, and we were sitting in first class. And the stewardess said, "Would you fool my friend? Because you look like Sting, and you look like his wife, and and we'll fool the other um, <laughs> air hostess or whatever." So. She came down and I said, yeah, it's a great trip, thank you. Could I have a little more blah, blah, blah? And then, and then I felt bad about it because we didn't ever have a reveal. And, I, and, and the other stewardess came by and said, oh, she thought that was so, she thought you were staying. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, For that's four great. hours, For, she thought yeah, you were staying, like, right? I don't feel yeah. good about this. So yeah. eventually I told her, hey, by the way, I'm not really staying. And she was like, oh, you're not? I said, no, I'm just, I'm doing commercials. I do commercials for Skaggs Alpha Beta. And she says, oh, I see those commercials. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so. Bless your heart. Bless your, Bless, your heart. Heart. Bless your heart. Well, if you walked around talking like that, I'm telling you right now, Sooner people would be like, oh my gosh, that stink. Yes. Um, I know I would. Uh, so, America's Got Talent. Can I ask them about yeah. this? Yeah, so 2013. About this. 2013. Yeah. Tell us about your experience and even why you did it. 
Well, I, I, I was surprised when I got contacted by yeah. a producer because I thought, uh, this is for amateurs, right? This is mm -hmm. like an amateur hour. How do you audition for that? You make a tape and you just send it in? or? Well, they contacted you. They contacted me. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I mean, there are these gatherings. They have big cattle yeah, call yeah. kind of things. And I, I really didn't want to do that. Yeah. So I said, can you look at some of my videos? And they said, yeah, we'll do that. I went, oh, good. So they said, uh, they called me finally one day and said, well, we're in L.A. tomorrow. We're going to do the thing. You're going to need to come on stage and do something. And, uh, and then if you do well there, you'll go on to Vegas, and we'll just take it from there. Yeah. And in the meantime, I sort of had, had queried it with them, and they said, well, no, no, comics come, and it's not just amateurs. It's like people do it. And I thought, all right, this is a promotional thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to win the million dollars. I'm not going to be number one. That's never going to happen. And I don't, I don't Positive care. Positive outlook. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Well, I, like I don't know. I Good job, Charlie Brown. I've been, like this, Charlie Brown. I've been in this business a while, Chuck. I may not. You Did know. you wear the jacket? I wore the audition. jacket. Yeah, I should have. So we went. To, I went to the Pantages, and I had like no uh, preparation, particularly, and they make you wait a while, but. I, and I went on stage, and I just kind of did whatever I wanted to do, and then I went, bye-bye, and they went, oh, wait, 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 we have to judge you. <laughs> like, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, pardon me. I forgot that part. Good, and then they and you're going to go to Vegas. I'm like, oh, oh good. Yeah, Fine. and you won. Yeah. And then, then I went to Vegas, and then it became kind of hard work because it was like, well, you got to stick around in mm -hmm. Vegas for a couple, three days, and you got to go where we say and stay where we say and act like we act, want you to act. And, and they would come into the room, a big room full of people, wonderful artists and children and characters and all kinds of performers. And it, but we all had to hang out and they would come in and say, all right, everyone needs to look really worried now. The judges are considering you. You need to look worried. No laughing. If you ever want to make a room full of people laugh, <laughs> say don't look laugh. Worried. give them that kind of <laughs> <laughs> announcement. And we were all, uh, it was very hard. Oh. And then, uh, you know, it, it, I wouldn't say it was the most pleasant time I ever had. But it was fun, and I got to do. I got to go on stage at Radio mm -hmm. City Music Hall, yeah. Yeah. and that was what I wanted. I yeah. wanted to be in front that's of six thousand really cool, people yes. and the American public doing impressions. Yeah. And that's well, what I, did. You, I mean, you what got to the quarterfinals? I forget. I think something. I, I, I mean, it was great. You guys can so you can find it on YouTube as well. But it's a very solid. lofty thing. Yeah. Solid performances. Thank you, Absolutely. team. Yeah. So, have you ever gotten any advice along the way that's really stuck with you and helped you in your career? I have a lot of it from my mom. And uh, others, other, other professionals I've worked with. And one thing that I like to tell people that are starting out is that, you know, don't agree with people that say it's too hard, mm -hmm. you can't do it, they've already got everybody, you know, the same five guys do everything. And uh, I, I basically had to recognize that that was a falsehood myself. Mm -hmm. When I was in New York, I used to hear that. But when you're in New York and you're a struggling young actor, you hear all kinds of stuff that is designed to just take you right out of the market. Yep. <laughs> and I'm sure it's true in yep. L.A. too. You know, like, uh, well, you can't join SAG unless you've got a SAG job, so it's impossible. You're like, oh, you're like, oh I guess I can't. Mm -hmm. And then there's lots of, it sort of weeds out all these, all these poor bits of information, sort of weed out people that really want to do it. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that I was going to be a voiceover guy in addition to the things that I do. And so if somebody said to me, you know, it's so competitive and the agents won't listen to your demo tape mm -hmm. and really the same 10 guys do everything. Then I heard it enough times to realize, well, if, I'm, if everybody's saying that, it's wrong. <laughs> it, it smells yeah. like something yeah. wrong that it's everybody's like just saying. It's no. conspiracy. It's all fishy. Yeah. 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 And so I decided, so, and every time I would hear it or someone would say it to me in my mind, I would go, that's not true. No. I don't need to like fight it or... or you know, right. slap anybody right. across the chops with a with a, a bass or something, but I, uh, I I knew that it was just wrong. So that's part of it. You have to always keep your own counsel and keep firm that way. It's mm -hmm. like if there's something that you feel you're good at, that you feel you can contribute in some way, don't let anyone talk you out of it. It's easy to say, particularly you know, we're, we're very sensitive to those things. But right. I think you have to have a little selfish, little center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That goes. No, I really like to do this. <laughs> just yeah. keep that really solid yeah. there and keep Well, no, because often it, it deflates that. you as opposed to inspiring you and just saying, you know, some of some dreams are non-negotiable, you know. It's like this is my focus and, you know. I think it's kind of like a big fraternity. It sort of hazes you. Yeah. To mm, see if you, that's uh, a very good way of putting to it. To see if you can It's a fraternity it. hazing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah only, the, only these people didn't even get in the fraternity. Right. They're just outside the frat right. house yeah, with, the, with the paddles. Let me in. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. the Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> hey, let's talk some dead. No. Uh, are you watching <laughs> the show? 
I, I confess I'm not. Your head would explode. I can't. Yeah. I can't. My, my good friend who I starred with in our, our series, Ross Marquand, who plays mm -hmm. Aaron in that show, oh. uh, he went right from our series to that little show, and he's doing very well, so I'm a big fan of his, yeah. but I um, yeah. haven't been able to watch the show Oof, very much. I can't. It's I a can't. Bit, you know, it's a bit gooey it for is. me. Mm -hmm. If you have kids, you really can't yeah. watch yeah. it. I don't have yeah. kids, so I watch it. If but you're a semi-grown-up, I can't watch it. Yeah, I know. But I, I appreciate I keep, it. I want to keep on the advice thing, too, and the advice that I've gotten... Um, and, and, uh, you know, I guess I, I met an actor, um, again, when I was in New York getting started and I was, you know, constantly asking actors if I ran into them, you know, what do you recommend? What's your yeah. word of advice? You know, yeah, there was no YouTube then. So, right. you know, you'd have to actually talk to people. And I ran into an old stage actor named Bill McCutcheon who I'd seen in a, in a play on Broadway. And I was like, oh, you, you were on that play. Uh, what do you recommend? What's, what's your word of advice? And he says, persistence. Ah. Uh. And at the time, I was like 24 or whatever. I went, oh, persistence, no problem. Can I buy that totally. at yeah. Sam Goody? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where's that? Because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm determined to have a long career, so that I'll do that at the same time as I'm doing all these other yeah. things. And then years later, I realized, oh, persistence. Mm -hmm. It's like granite has persistence. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic has persistence. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, but it's also keeping... Kato Kalin. Oh, not so much persistence. So much yeah. persistence. So there's, there's degrees. So, yeah, but it's also <laughs> keeping the persistence, especially in the times when the yeah. phone's not ringing and the email inbox yeah. is not filling yeah. up. Now, what I've learned from my mother in that regard, uh, because I watched her and saw her, is that mm -hmm. when she wasn't working uh, for gainful employment as an actress, she would work as an actress. She would do a play. Mm-hmm which is a great way to not have gainful employment as an actress. Yeah. Uh, and so in my world, it's been, well, I did a lot of improv in New York. I did, always do shows. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and even today, if things are slow, I, I put on a show. Yeah. I'll, I'll go somewhere and do a show for anybody. If you do what it is that you're trying to do enough times, and eventually somebody will, will want to pay you for it. Absolutely. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, you must know this as a musician. Yes. Yes. I, I mean, if I was a guy who played guitar and I had no work, I would go to a restaurant and say, do you mind if I play guitar here? Mm -hmm. You know, and just start something. Yeah. Keep the muscles. Yeah. yeah. Then you're ready. You're practiced. Yeah. You also learn from an audience so much, as yeah. particularly with improv and comedy, mm -hmm. right? You, 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 you hear and you sense, even, even if you don't hear laughter, you sense that they're, oh, they got that. They got right. that. They're, they're with me. They're yep. with me. Mm -hmm. If I do this, they like that a lot. And, you know, after 10 or 20 years, you know a lot that you can't even quantify about what a room full of people, how they will feel Absolutely. and what they'll respond right. to. Right, right. So I, I say, that. do it. And these days, you know, with YouTube and with Sound Snap and or SoundCloud and all these things, uh, there's no excuse if you're an actor. Mm -hmm. Why don't you have your own show? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you have something? You know, yeah. do a cartoon, do a voiceover thing, do a podcast, do yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. uh, there really is no barrier. It finally got down to, for me, getting into YouTube about I don't know, five years ago. Uh, it finally got down to, I had a flip cam, somebody gave me one button. Plugs into your laptop. I'm like, okay, I, I'm busted. I have to do yeah. something now. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I can, I can figure I, that out. Yeah, I can figure <laughs> this out. And that's when I started doing uh, these little videos. And I set myself the task of doing a video a day mm -hmm. for like, a, I tried to do a month. I don't think I quite did a month. But because I think a lot of people do this when they first start off with YouTube. They go, this, okay, I'm going to do this video. And it's really, I wrote it and it's going to be, and I gotta, just got to get the right lighting. And then yes. if I could get my friend Benjamin, he's got a great camera, but he's out of town. And you're trying to plan and get this first video to be, you know, Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's like, no, 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 no. Do 10 videos. Have them all be crap, whatever. Yeah. But you'll begin a flow. Totally. You know? Mm -hmm. it's no, like, you uh, can wait your life away, waiting for everything to be yeah. perfect. And, no waiting. Yeah. No waiting. Yep. I think it's nice to see growth and see how people progress yeah and, you know from where you started i mean every sitcom had a first season and you look and you go <laughs> you know i mean everything yeah. wasn't perfect yeah that's right first they get it on first yeah. you get it on uh it's it's very important to do it like if you're well it's musicians the same way and, and artists like we scribble and scrabble and make all kinds of, get rid of that and that sucks and if we waited around to do it perfect you'd have a look and after 20 yes. years this one yeah. cartoon yeah and now it's, it's my sketch style. pad yeah. of yeah. one yeah. piece of paper no, yeah. exactly it's one piece of one paper piece considered left. a pad yeah. 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 we already have that cat that's, that's fred flint's on the group oh yes oh, oh. 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 oh there's rock oh. man again <laughs> oh, <laughs> question uh, Jim, what, 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 do you, what do you feel is your most memorable 
experience in your career? Ooh, well, uh, uh, America's Got Talent was pretty memorable. It was um, unique. 6,000 people, Radio City mm -hmm. Music Hall. And you felt like, it felt, you know, it's a little bit entertainment, a little bit the Olympics. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, I had to run out. You have 90 seconds? Yeah. 90 seconds, a good 15 of which is spent getting to the center of the stage. Right. It's a huge stage. Yeah. yeah. And then, apparently, my microphone was off for the first 22 seconds. Oh. Don't know what was going on there. So you were a mime for so a little while. So I was a mime for 22 <laughs> seconds. So I, I, I got a little bit ripped off there, and then I got to do it and do my thing, and then got a standing ovation. My mom was there. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, and my wife. And That's really pretty, cool. Pretty, yeah. pretty memorable. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to forget uh, that. Yeah. yeah. I felt like, ah. I did it. I can do this. But I really, it took everything. I was like, all right. I had to kind of talk myself into it backstage. Like, all right, are you here to do this now? Yeah. Right. Are you ready to do right. this? Right. It's on. The yeah. the 90 seconds of your entire life. Probably. It was long. Yeah. All right. That's all we have for part one with Jim Meskimate. We're going to be back next week with part two. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes. Go hit the logo down right there. Right there. Bam, you're in. Absolutely. And also keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for, for a little, little fun. fun. Come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. The O Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.